In the wondrously wacky world of Tim Burton, there are plenty of viciously vulgar villains to talk about. When it comes to villains of the Burtonverse, some are evil due to the necessity for a villain in a movie, while others are truly scum. But which of these kooky bad guys are the most evil, and which ones aren't nearly as bad? I'm Dan with Wicked Binge, and this is Tim Burton Villains, Evil to Most Evil. So first, a couple of rules for the list on what we consider a Tim Burton movie and therefore a Tim Burton villain. Firstly, they have to be a full length, preferably theatrical movie. So none of Tim Burton's short films qualify for the list. Secondly, Tim Burton must have either directed the film or helped write the story for the characters of the film. So movies that Burton only produced don't qualify either. And finally, only one villain per franchise of movie. It's showtime. With our rules out of the way, let's get started speaking on our villains in the bad to evil category. The least evil villain on our list is Don Price from Big Fish. Don is the former friend of the main protagonist, Edward Bloom, from childhood. The two of them tried to steal the eye of a witch, which causes said witch to predict their deaths in the far future. Beyond this, he beats Edward up when he finds out that Edward has been sleeping with his fiance. But Edward didn't know that the woman was taken, nor that she's Don's fiance, and he doesn't really seem to care. After that, he dies from a heart attack on the toilet, and that's about all he does in the movie. He ranks this high because even though he beats up Edward, it's for good reason. And other than that, he barely does anything. Going down our list, we find Francis Buxton from Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Francis is a spoiled rich kid who is really interested in Pee-wee's bike, so much so that he's willing to buy the bike from him. However, because he was denied the bike, he hires a bike thief to steal the bike from Pee-wee. He lies to the police about his involvement in said bike thievery, and then tries to get rid of the bike so it couldn't be traced back to him. After the bike is recovered and a movie is made about Pee-wee's journey, he lies about his involvement with Pee-wee. Pee-wee's past. He's really not that bad of a guy, he's just a spoiled brat with a big head. But he doesn't have any good reasons for his actions like Don sort of has. Hailing from Dumbo, and the newest villain on our list, is V.A. Vandeveer. Vandeveer is a corrupt theme park owner who strikes a beneficial deal with the Medici Circus to show off Dumbo to the world from his park. However, while he seems nice at first, he's a ruthless, greedy businessman who will do anything as long as it turns a profit. This extends to him being willing to kill Dumbo's mother because he felt like she was getting in the way of his profit. He is also shown to be a bit foolish at times, causing the fire that burns down his park because he wouldn't listen to the technicians. Vandeveer is greedy and callous, but he hasn't murdered anyone, which means he can't rank any lower in our eyes. The main villain of Frankenweenie, Mr. Whiskers, is next on our list. Mr. Whiskers is a cat and the pet of Weird Girl who can allegedly see the future. Mr. Whiskers doesn't show any villainous traits until his mutation. His mutation comes about when Victor's experimental machine shocks the cat with a vampire bat in its mouth. This causes him to mutate into a vampire cat that starts to terrorize people around town. He kidnaps Persephone and takes them to a windmill and then tries to kill her, although he is then killed by a falling stake. All in all, Whiskers ranks lower than Vandeveer because unlike Vandeveer, he does try to kill multiple people. Up next on our list is Edward Scissorhands, Jim. James, often shortened to Jim, is seen as Edward's rival throughout the movie. Jim was Kim's boyfriend at the beginning of the movie and a well-respected member of the community to some degree. However, he originally uses Edward to his advantage rather than fighting him. He uses Edward's skills to break into his parents' home and then leaves him behind when the cops arrive. He seems to hate and attack Edward consistently after this, accusing him of intentionally harming Kim even though that's not the case. He then physically attacks Edward, which causes Kim to dump him. He attacks Edward once more while drunk and then forms an angry mob to attack him. He then harms Kim to try and kill Edward, however this causes Edward to kill him to protect Kim. The potato sack pestilence known as Oogie Boogie from The Nightmare Before Christmas comes next on our list. Oogie is a creature made up of bugs in a potato sack and the personification of a child's fear of the boogeyman. It is implied he tried to overthrow Jack prior to the events of the movie and is driven underground because of this. 
He kidnaps Santa Claus utilizing shock, lock, and barrel, and begins to mentally and nearly physically torture him. He even tries to cook both Santa and Sally after Sally tricks him to try to save Santa. However, he is unraveled and squashed by Jack, killing him. Oogie can't rank lower because he really doesn't do much in the movie, although torture is pretty bad, and he does get much closer to murder than Jim. Coming from The Corpse Bride, Barxus Bittern is next on our list. Lord Bittern is a greedy, manipulative, and arrogant aristocrat who is also a scam artist and gold digger. He wants to get married to different wealthy women and then kill them and steal their riches before running away and doing it again. He manipulates the Everglot and Van Dort families into believing that Victor ran off with another woman so that he could marry Victoria. It is later revealed that his scam has worked in the past, specifically on Emily, who he killed and buried in the forest. He then tries to kill both Victoria and Victor in front of the huge crowd at their wedding, but fails, leading him to accidentally drink poison and become a zombie before getting his comeuppance and being dragged to the afterlife. Bittern is the first villain on this list to actually have a body count, and that causes his low ranking on our list. Up next on our list is the Red Queen from Alice in Wonderland. The Red Queen is the impatient, oppressive, narcissistic, and envious empress of Underland. She is well known for treating her subjects unfairly and having a bad temper. She overthrew her sister to become queen and took to it immediately, being very well known for her consistent executions. She even used the powerful Jabberwocky to try to kill both the White Queen and Alice. However, she does eventually get overthrown by her servants and has a pseudo change of heart by the end of the movie, although this doesn't last long. In Through the Looking Glass, she becomes the girlfriend of time to control the universe. She then betrays time as he is dying to try to kill Alice once more, but fails again. She has plenty of kills under her belt and due to her literal and figurative big head, she definitely falls pretty low. The ghost host with the most to boast, Beetlejuice from Beetlejuice, is next on our list. Beetlejuice is a bio-exorcist who specializes in driving humans away from haunted areas and started to help the Maitlands when the Dietz family moved in. He is an agent of chaos and a demented con artist with a bit of a temper. He has very few morals, being fine with committing multiple murders and trying to assault both Barbara and Lydia. He has no sense of boundaries and is disgusting and obnoxious, especially around other people. His plan is to marry the teenage Lydia and use her to escape into the human world. He doesn't rank any lower on our list because his limited screen time stops him from doing anything truly monstrous. One of the most despised villains on our list, Judge Turpin from Sweeney Todd the Demon Barber of Fleet Street is up next. Judge Turpin is a high-ranking London official, well known for being malevolent, cruel, and diabolical. Not to mention, he is deceitful and manipulative, completely ruining Todd's life and sending him to Australia on false charges. However, from an an outsider's perspective, he is highly elegant, polite, and sophisticated with a puritanical devotion to law. This devotion to the law makes him quite evil at times. For example, he sentenced a young boy to be hanged for his petty crimes. He drugs and sexually assaults Todd's wife Lucy and then takes in Todd's daughter Joanna as his own and raises her as his ward. He then wants to marry Joanna to cure him of his lust for her and sends her to a mental asylum when she doesn't want to marry him. He does have his his comeuppance when Todd kills him during a shave. It's quite obvious why he ranks this low on our list, but even all of these evils aren't enough to rank him lower. The main antagonist from Sleepy Hollow, Mary Van Tassel, is next on our list. Mary was born as Mary Archer, who was kicked out of her home following her father's death. In order to seek revenge on her landlord who took her home from her, she hid in the forest and met the Hessian, who she betrayed and let die. This allows her to make a deal with the devil to take control of the Hessian soul and use it against the Van Garrett and Van Tassel family. She causes the death of Baltus's first wife and seduces him to become a member of the Van Tassel family. After becoming a Van Tassel, she not only cheats on her husband, but also kills most of the Van Tassel family family while pretending to help Ichabod Crane solve their murders. She even drew the other high-ranking members of the community into her plot to murder the Van Tassels. She has a high kill count and is one of the most murderous and deceitful villains on this list. However, she doesn't rank lower because at the very least, she did it for what could be seen as semi-good reasons. Leader of every ape you see, from Chimpan A to Chimpan Z, up next is General Thade from Planet of the Apes. 
Thade is the general of the ape populace and is seen as a leader and tyrant. He captures and enslaves any and all humans that the army stumbles upon and then hunts them down if they escape, not caring for their lives unless they're working. It is later revealed that he knew everything about the intelligent monkey and spaceship that created their civilization and kept it hidden from society. Thade ranks lower than Mary due to the fact that everything he does throughout the film doesn't have any truly good reasons, whereas you can sort of stretch Mary's goals to be semi-good. However, he's still not in the bottom three. A similar style of villain, the Martian leader for Mars Attacks is next on our list. As his name implies, he is the leader of the Martian army that attacks the Earth. He is a brutal and hateful leader that has multiple kills under his belt by the end of the movie. He not only experiments on mostly dead humans, but shows he has no morals by tricking and killing the president with a robotic arm. He smacks his minions when they fail him and is responsible for hundreds, if not thousands of deaths. He does get killed by high frequency yodel music by the end, but he definitely ranks this low. He may not have enslaved humans, but he did try to commit planetary genocide. Grabbing our bronze medal of evil is Angelique Bouchard from Dark Shadows. Angelique is a witch who was obsessed with the nobleman Barnabas Collins because she was raised to hate the rich family due to being their servant. She developed her skills in witchcraft and fell in love with Barnabas, although he didn't reciprocate. She then places a petty curse on Barnabas, making everything and everyone he loves cursed to fail or die, and cursed him to become a vampire so his suffering can never end. She then grew herself in power to rival and outclass the Collins family at every turn. After Barnabas comes out of his burial and spurns her once more, she blows up the Collins cannery and tries to frame him for it. She then tries to bury him once more. She even tried to arrest Elizabeth on false charges in association with the arson she tried to pin on Barnabas. By the end of the film, she is by far one of the most hated and despised characters in Tim Burton's repertoire, so much so that even Johnny Depp said to have hated her beyond reason. She only grabs the bronze because unlike the bottom two, she hasn't committed mass murder or any sort of related crime, but her sheer pettiness and lack of empathy makes her a good candidate for the spot. Snatching the silver medal of evil is Batman's Joker. Jack Napier was a career criminal who worked for Carl Grissom as his personal hitman and Enforcer. He was even half of the duo who killed Thomas and Martha Wayne, leading to the rise of Batman. Napier worked for Grissom for many years and grew attached to using his playing cards to tell him what to do, although he ignored them while working for Grissom once, causing his transformation. He fell into a vat of chemicals, creating the clown prince of crime himself, Joker. You can call me Joker. After becoming Joker, he kills Grissom and starts a lengthy crime spree that includes everything from a parade with counterfeit money to vandalizing art museums. He also kidnaps Vicki Vale from Bruce Wayne due to being envious of their relationship. He fights with Batman and does quite well for a moment, but is soon defeated by the much better trained man, and then laughs as he ends his own life. Joker has no morals at all, laughing in the face of danger and his victims. He is a no-brainer pick for the silver medal, but is only second place for good reason. Because our gold medal of evil belongs to Mr. Baron from Miss Peregrine's home for peculiar children. Baron is the leader of the creatures known as Whites and Hollows, human-like creatures who hunt down and kill peculiars and then eat their eyeballs to become young or grow powerful. Baron is a cruel, sadistic, and ruthless man who doesn't care about anyone or anything besides pushing himself forward and higher up. He doesn't even seem to care about his minions or workers and feels nothing when they die. He is also an intelligent and meticulous, having killed and eaten hundreds if not thousands of young peculiars and their eyes over the many years he has been alive. He is also shown to love taunting his victims prior to killing them, and does the same to Miss Peregrine when she is captured. He seeks to become immortal due to ingesting the eyes of peculiars, especially younger peculiars, and comes very close to doing so. He is also able to shapeshift and trick people by pretending to be Jake's psychologist to get close to him so he can eat his eyes. Mr. Barrett. How do you do? He then tries to trick the children into killing the real Jake by pretending to be Jake, although this causes him to be killed by one of his minions who didn't realize who it was. Baron grabs the gold because he kills and eats many children for his own personal gain, has no regard for life or other people, and will do anything as long as it benefits him. With the villains all wrapped up, we now get to the plethora of extra medals that these dastardly do-batters have earned. Getting our dark 
Irwin Medal for the dumbest character on the list is Francis Buxton. His whole plan is sort of idiotic. He wants to own Pee-wee's bike for no reason and then lies about his involvement in training Pee-wee to ride it, just for clout. The Gluttony Medal goes to Mr. Baron, who gains his powers through eating the eyeballs of Peculiars, which means he's eaten a lot of eyeballs. Getting our Wrath Medal is none other than Jim, who tries to kill Edward on multiple occasions due to his jealousy that he thinks Edward is trying to steal Kim, and then gets heavily drunk and even angrier. Snatching the Envy Medal is Joker, who is shown to be envious enough of Bruce Wayne and Vicky Vale's relationship to try to kidnap Vicky. Stealing the Greed Medal is quite obviously V.A. Vandeveer, who is a greedy businessman who obviously only cares about money and profit and will do almost anything for a dollar. The universally hated Angelique Beauchard takes the Pride Medal, who loves Barnabas Collins enough to curse him and his family for generations due to thinking that there is no one better for him than her. Finally, the Lust Medal goes to Judge Turpin, whose whole story is based on his lust, including his assault and eventual attempt at marrying his young ward. But let us know in the comments section if you agree with our ranking, and tell us what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge our Good and Evil playlist, where we break down the morality of characters to your favorite cartoons, shows, and movies. But most importantly, stay wicked.